So welcome back to the shop. Everybody that has a leaf for a certain time and does work with it knows the problem. You have a, a thin disc shaped object and you want to clamp it up in the chuck like this and you want it to run through and in many cases you want to chuck it on on a very small amount of material. And there are a number, number of different ways you can do this. The most common way is to use a set of parallels that is slightly lower than your chuck jaws. Drop the part on top of it, press it down, clamp it and pull out the parallels. Don't forget to pull out the parallels. Um, the, the impact of the parallels in your chip pan is, <laughs> is quite noticeable and everybody will notice it. Um, also, if one of these hits you in the forehead, um, <laughs> yeah. So that's one way. Normally I do it that way, but um, the parallels are, especially when you use the reversed jaws, when you have a larger disc shaped object, this doesn't work very well. Um, other people use a, a, ball, a ball bearing mounted again on a stick, clamped up in the tool post to push against the part to make it run through but I don't like that very much that's not my style and then there are chuck spiders they look like yeah it's a disc that's milled out to fit over the jaws and provide support for the part um, Posi Stop is a very known brand for those Tom Lipton showed how to make one yourself, but yeah, um, <laughs> I also don't like that style because it's very material. Um, it takes a lot of material to make them. And then I saw Robin, Robin Rancetti's video on the caliper modifications, where he showed this this guy here. This is just a screenshot printed out in my notebook for future reference. And what he has is this stop here is gets clamped against the chuck body with this clamping piece here. And this can slide in and out to accommodate different diameters of parts. And the height can adjust it with these screws. They they have a hex head so you can manipulate them with a small wrench and the body of this um, backstop is slit and has a clamping screw so you can lock this screw in place. At least that's how I interpret this um, <laughs> that thing. Um, and he shows the setup in, his, in, in, in the video I mentioned. I will also put the link down in the description. This seems to work very well. Um, the problem is, ah, my lathe uses a 125 millimeter chuck. Um, what's that? Six inch, six inch chuck, and the jaws are pretty, pretty small, and there is not much space to make um, a adjuster a, a backstop like this with the height adjustment built in. What I'm going to build is something similar, but I'm. I make uh, screw in height adjusters with fixed length. I will make them so you just screw them in full length and then they have a fixed distance from the top of your jaw. They will be surface ground also the same height so precision is not a, a problem. And the remaining design is the same. I will have the, the sliding body and the clamp screw to the chuck and a row of holes so I can accommodate every possible diameter. Um, when we go over here, there are some design iterations. I started to sketch out my chuck jaw and the block next to it, some, some more iterations. And this is the final design that I came up with. Um, what you see here is practically a view from that direction onto the chuck jaw. This is the cross section of the chuck jaw. Next to it we have this block 
with a, a slot cut into it and on top of the of this block screws in the standoff which gives our support for the part and next to it there is this block which is the clamp that engages into the slot and gets screwed down with two M4 screws and holds this whole mess together. That's what we're going to build. I already picked out a piece of tool steel out of my bin. Uh, <coughs> uh, tool steel precision ground. Um, precision ground tool steel or ground tool steel is quite expensive and um, I really keep every small drop of it that when I buy a piece and I have some leftovers I just drop it in here and this is always a good source of material for me because I don't like to use mild steel for most things because it's soft and um, the tool steels machine generally quite well if you don't use um, uh, 12379 which is uh, D2 tool steel, I think. Uh, that's quite a mess to work with. But this uh, 12767 machine's quite nice and it's it's stupid easy to harden. So that's what we're going to use. There's a piece of 10 by 10 with some grinding allowance. So I think I will keep the parts soft in a soft state. So um, we're going to grind this piece down to 10 by 10 and then machine the parts out of it. So I have the piece of tool steel all squared up and to size. The actual dimension is not really important, but I ground it to ten, roughly 10 millimeters. So uh, at least caliber precision. Next step before we cut it into the three single standoffs is to machine the slot into it so I don't I don't have to cut three slots. Okay, I have to clamp the part directly onto the table of the mill because my vise is not wide enough to support the whole piece. I tucked down the part with two clamps already. I will add two more on the other side after I indicated it in. And I have this clamp here tightened down very lightly just, just so nothing flies away. And this one is only Tighten down with the finger so I can move the part with my small copper knocker. And I have my dial indicator back here. Give it some preload, move it to a convenient number like zero, and let the table traverse with power feet. As you can see, we're dropping, so the part needs to go that direction. And you just knock it until you hit your zero again. You might have to adjust it slightly when you get to the end. There we go. Zero here. That's plus one. 
We might have to do this two times because due to the rotation the uh, dimension changed. But if we go back to zero over here, that means we have a one hundredth of a millimeter bow in the part, which doesn't matter at all for this purpose. So now we can tighten down the locking screws completely and we just move the part as it seems. Double check it. And go back. That's zero. Slightly slight bow in the part. That's perfect. And that's how fast you can indicate the parts on the milling machine. You don't have, don't have to knock it around on two. When you start to knock parts around on two sides while measuring, you will never get it straight. Um, at least not in a reasonable time. And that's also the reason why I don't have keys or alignment pins or stuff like that in my Weiss or my rotary table. I like to indicate every piece every time I use it. Um, that way I have two advantages. First of all, I get always the precision I want. Second, I get pretty fast at indicating. You saw this, this didn't took two minutes. And now I know my slot will be in line with the part. So indicate, not align. So using the edge finder to find the center on the workpiece, touch it off on both sides, and then I'm using the half button to center. I just have to crank back to zero now, and my tool is exactly in the center of the workpiece. I'm using a four millimeter two flute carbide amp mill to cut the slot um, dry without lubricant. This works just fine. I took a few cuts to, get, to go to full depth and then I cleaned up the size. Here I'm using a 6 fluid carbide end mill to clean up the ends of the workpiece. Just take a skim cut, I do this before I saw the pieces apart. I used a caliper and a, a pen to mark out my cut lines for to cut it apart on the bandsaw. And finally I got round to make a table for my bandsaw so I can use it as a vertical bandsaw. As you can see I'm just using a piece of particle board as a table right now. The sheet metal has not arrived yet. The sawn pieces get back on the mill against the stop and cut to final length. I'm using a roughing end mill because there, <laughs> uh, there was quite a lot of material left on the... I'm using a, a spotting drill. This is one of my shop ground spotting drills. Um, to get the positions of the threaded holes for the standoffs. Um, uh, tap drill, 3.3 millimeters. Using some water soluble oil. And then power tapping, 4 millimeter thread. Running at, uh, I think, 100 RPM. For such low quantities, um, a tapping head would be a uh, total overkill. By tapping with the quill and reverse of the motor, you're just fine. Uh, chamfering the edges of the hole, giving a nice counterbore so the thread doesn't get pulled out over the surface. And using my chamfering machine to deburr and chamfer all the edges of all the pieces I made so far. Just a very small 0.5 or 0.75 millimeter chamfer.
Okay, that's slowly coming all together. Um, I finished the the sliding part, which have the backstop screw. Uh, right now, it's just a normal uh, machine screw in there, and these will go next to the jaws. And then, off camera, I already made this clamping profile, which has. Um, the step milled out and it goes next to the sliding part here and it will of course be shorter and it will be screwed down with two screws and it will lock the sliding piece in place and as you can see they interlock like this and the clamping part is relieved down here and there's only a step back here contacting the chuck so there is some some clearance for clamping and as I said these screws are just a placeholder so um, next step will be to cut them apart into individual pieces I will do that on the bandsaw again since I have the the bandsaw table cutting up such small pieces has uh, gotten way easier it's it's easier than trying to chuck it up in the giant wise of the, of the bandsaw in horizontal mode. It's easier just to push them through the saw blade. Okay, cleaning out the wise with compressed air and now I'm machining the clamping pieces to length. As I cut them before on the bandsaw again. Uh, running a six fluid carbide end mill. And now this is the setup to drill the screw holes to mount the pieces against the chuck body. Uh, always make sure everything is clean. You don't have chips on any clamping surface or you will embed the chip in your part and lose precision of course. Uh, I, I took out the parallels because I don't like to drill into them. Spot drilling. Clearance hole for a 4mm screw. and counter boring with a 6mm end mill. Normally a counter bore for a 4mm screw would be bigger but um, this part is a bit small and I don't have space for a full size counter bore so I have to turn down the heads of the screws slightly. Okay, I turned down a set of screws so we can mount these blocks to the chuck like this and now we have to take the chuck apart and drill and tap it and we should better not mess this up a broken tap in the chuck body would not be that cool um, first i have to figure out where the holes go because i want to um, i want to have the full range of of adjustment here uh, let's Take this guy apart. First you have to get the back plate off. Okay, that's how uh, normally every chuck looks when you take it apart or take the back plate off. There is always dirt in it. And in here we have the chuck body. I think I'm going to throw all these into in the ultrasonic cleaner to get most of the dirt out um, and to degrease them to a certain level. Okay, we're over at the milling machine and I want to set the chuck body up on the rotary table so we can drill the holes. And my rotary table is obviously too small to clamp it down from the sides with uh, studs and strap clamps. So the next obvious thing would be to to run a stud through the center and have a big washer or a strap across the hole to clamp it down. A single bolt will be good enough so it doesn't move when, when we drill it. But 
the rotary table has of course no threaded hole in the center it has only a more steeper tooth socket so what uh, what what uh, should I do the easiest solution is to take a strap clamp that has a threaded hole in the end normally that's for the jack screw to uh, level it out but you can also use these to place a <laughs> to move a thread out from your clamping position so when we screw down this strap clamp here on the rotary table now we have a threaded hole in the center of the rotary table we can drop in a piece of threaded rod take two parallels And I know, don't know if this is um, if everybody does this, but for me it got totally to be a habit. Every time I pick up a parallel or some other setup gear, I run it through my fingers. First, I will remove any minor pieces of uh, dust or grinding dust or debris or chips, and I will also feel if there's burr, so I don't have to stone my parallels all the time. Then we can take our chuck, also wipe it down and drop it over the threaded rod. Now we can clamp it down very, very easy from the center. Like this. Washer and a 6mm flange nut. And as we're clamping on machine surfaces, a piece of brass shim stock can't hurt. Just tighten it down very lightly. We still have to align it to the center of the rotary table. Indicating the chuck body on the rotary table. Looking for the high spot. And going half the, half the indicator sweep in the other direction. That's a pretty fast way to get parts centered. I have to center the spindle of the machine over the part and I'm sweeping the other diameter of the chuck. A mirror is always helpful if you do that. I don't like the coax indicators very much. I prefer the dial test indicator. Now I'm aligning one of the jaw slots with the travel of the axis. And I drill my tap holes for the M4 threads. Indexing just with the dial. Drilling the next pair of holes. And of course I'm using the depth stop because I don't want to break through into the housing of the chuck because that way a lot of dirt would get over time into the chuck. And then um, power tapping, M4 thread against the stop, uh, quill stop that is. This is an operation you have to be very careful. Okay, um, you saw me just threading the holes for the clamping pieces here and I already put it back together, at least um, partially. <laughs> um, of course there is the, the, still all the internals of the chuck missing, but just to, to give you an idea how this works, you, you screw the You mount the backstop onto the chuck body, then you can adjust it wherever you need it, like this, and then you clamp it with these two 4mm screws. And when you tighten these down, 
only a bit, you have no chance that these parts will move. Okay, I'm machining three of the first fixed height uh, standoffs and they're just turned from 6mm drill rod, 4mm thread on one side, thread relief and a hard shoulder here. Uh, the shoulder is very carefully faced. And then I parted them off to be a bit longer than I need them and I didn't bother to clean up the other end because um, I'm going to harden them and then this side will get surface ground so they all are perfectly the same height anyway so no need to do any more work than needed. Um, what we're doing right now is we machine a a uh, five millimeter hex on the e on the end of the standoff so we can screw it in with with a socket or a small wrench and I'm just doing this by manually indexing on the rotary table and to get them to the same height I'm using a parallel here on the chuck body and I'll let the part rest on the parallel with the shoulder that I machined. Like this, holding down the parallel with one finger, pressing down on the part with the other finger and tightening down the three charge chuck with the other hand. Just snug it up, remove the parallel and cut the hex. I'm just indexing every 60 degree by eye. Okay, I have the screws finished and I hardened them with torch. Just quenched them in water and annealed them back uh, to, to be not as hard. I took one of the um, sliding pieces of the backstop out of the chuck and we will use that to grind these three standoffs to exactly the same height. As this block is surface ground to be precisely parallel, when I screw all three of these standoffs in and I rest this on the magnetic chuck and surface ground over the top all three will come come out perfectly same height. Just snug them down. Okay, now we can go to the surface grinder and give it and take a cut over the top. Okay, setting up the part on the surface grinder. I'm using a big parallel behind my part and I use a small vice grip to clamp the parts together because the, the stop piece itself has, be, has a very little surface and I want to be on the safe side. And I'm also putting a parallel behind it as a stop or in line with it as a stop. Um, then it's just a matter of plunging down with the grinding wheel until we hit the right height. Plunging down and then traversing over the part to clean up the surface. A quick check on the height of the standoffs with the caliper. This dimension is not critical at all. They only have to be the same height. Now I'm at the lathe and I screw all the standoffs into the chuck using a 5mm a socket. Don't over tighten them. And now I'm checking with the dial test indicator against the 
face of the standoffs if they are all in the same position when mounted on the lathe. First one is zero, second one zero, and the last one zero. And that's as good as it gets. Okay, and with these backstops we can now clamp parts very very accurately in the chuck, in the chuck um, without any run out in the axial direction um, because they are all the same height and I can make them to any length I need for any purpose so I'm very flexible that way I like this setup this is really this seems to work quite nice and time will show how it fares in the practical use so okay there are a few pictures this is with the internal stepped jaws holding a large piece and here I'm using the backstop already to machine a big washer I did uh, coat blue all the steel parts and I made a few more of the standoffs in different heights and that's the complete set right now with the allen wrench and the screwdriver to use it and when the stop is not mounted I'm closing the threaded holes with some set screws hope this was interesting for you thank you all for watching and see you next time